Oh dear, pardon me, bit of wind to start the video. Howdy peeps and welcome back to the channel. And my Christmas present I thought I'd do a review on as it is a very, well, it's a this year's kit anyway. You may be wondering what it is. Well the box is honking and huge so what we have is Trumpeter's 135th Russian T90S modernised mod 2013. I'll bring the box back. There we go. That's about all I can get in without smashing the camera or actually taking the camera off the stand and doing it. Uh, it's the latest version of the T90 which as many of you will know is probably my favourite tank. Certainly favourite modern tank. Just looks far cooler than an Abrams. And what they've done with this one, Trumpeter, being Trumpeter, is they've upped the part count by another 300. This one's over 1600 parts. So, without further ado, and trying to manhandle the box around too much, let's take a look at what's inside it. Oh, as you can see, it's also fairly deep. Oh, and yeah, uh, kit number 09524, if you're interested in that. So let's get it popped to one side and opened up. Oh. And look through the plastic, see what we get. Oh, carnage, crash, bang, wallop, bits going everywhere. First bag we come to will be the lower hole, which I'm assuming is going to be the same T90 hole that's on every other T90 variant that I've built. It certainly looks that way. Check the little bag and yay, I emptied the bin. And in here we also get the vinyl hose for the um, fuel pipes and the copper braided cable for the tow cables. And poly caps for the wheels and sprockets and idlers. We'll pop those back in the box, we don't need to look at them anymore. Lower hole, not dated, but it just says T90 in it, so it is going to be the same one they've used on every other T90 kit. As you can see, it is straight, it rocks because it does, because the bottom's not completely smooth. As we can see, there's a lot of detail on the bottom with the well weld seams and all sorts of other bits and pieces. A couple of little nubs to get rid of but that's not a problem. But all in all, very well moulded, very well detailed lower hull. Um, it's a toss up on T90 kits whether you go for a Meng or a Trumpeter. Personally I think I prefer the Trumpeters. I've not actually built a Meng kit of the T90. I've built other Meng kits. Built the, um, oh, what do you call it, the Terminator. Yeah, fairly similar in places. Um, very nice kit, but I like my trumpeter. Lots and lots of parts. Lots of little fiddly parts and delicate parts. And first sprue we come to is going to be one of the new ones. Or what I'd assume is a new sprue, as you don't get it in most of the other T90s. I've built a few of them now. Sprue M, and I will zoom you in as the sprues are getting smaller. I'll just keep the cutting mat in shot, and we're okay. If it's on the cutting mat, we can see it. Oh, grab a pokey device. There we go. That'll do. Barbecue skewer. Uh, where do we start? Well, we've got the bird cage armor for around the rear with ejector pads on it so there aren't any nasty ejector pins on the actual bar armour it doesn't appear to be much if anything in the way of flashing on it a couple of hatches part of the MG aerial I'm assuming part of the upper hull front upper plate a couple of other plates and various greeblies, light guards etc but all very nicely detailed, crisp, cleanly moulded. 
and nothing to complain about there for certain. Okay, on the larger parts there are eject spin marks on the insides, but you're never going to see those. It's not a problem. Even if you open the hatch, they don't open vertically. They come up and pivot, so you'll never see the underside of the hatch that way either. And yeah, very nice looking sprue. Oh, this is going to there's going to be bits of plastic going everywhere at some point. I can just foresee it. Be a Christmas disaster. Yes, I am actually filming this on Christmas Day. <laughs> so Merry Christmas. Hey, I'm doing what I like to do. And the second sprue, Sprue E. This does look more of a standard T90 sprue. As you can see, we've got the main section of the upper hole. Uh, the rear plate. Front lower glacis, dozer blade or entrenching blade, engine deck covers, a few little hatchy bits, but again everything crisp, clean, tiny little bit of flash around the edge of these parts of the upper hole, but a quick swipe with the sanding stick and they'll disappear. And again, being a tank without an interior, we don't need to worry about the ejector pin marks if there are any on the inside. And there are, and none of them look nasty or horrible. Now you, you, not the uh, where you get the proud ones, where it's sort of like a quarter of an inch long spike of plastic sticking up, and then means that nothing will actually fit. There's none of those usually with the trumpeter kits. The next sprue being the upper fenders, drive covers. Oh, right, yeah, so right, left upper fender, final drive covers, another part of the entrenching tool, device, blade, diggery thing, another lower plate, the uh, bits that go in between the fenders and the main hull, some suspension parts, and various other little bits that you're not going to have a clue what they are until you put them on. As we can see, again, very nicely crisply detailed along the stowage boxes with the clasps and the straps and the little grab handles on the fuel tanks all very nice and we are going to get to a point where we're going to have to zoom in because some of these parts are going to get real small but hey that's what I like I like having a kit I can get my teeth into, not something that goes together in a couple of hours. Um, and yes, I'm fully aware of the irony that something that goes together in a couple of hours with me might take some people a bit longer, but you know, can't be helped. And this sprue. Uh, this will be one of the new sprues as well, so I've not really got much of an idea what any of this is. <laughs> I think this is contact armour for the turret and stowage bins. I think that might be the MG, yeah, the remote MG housing. All sorts of lovely little greebly bits, some delicate fiddly bits. You have to be careful taking off the sprue. So then it's a, another slide mould as you can see with the detail on this side. That side, that side, and that side. You've got detail on all the sides of it, so yeah, quite a complex slide mould to get that there. But again, flash free, clean, crisp, nice sprue. So, probably be only when we get to the parts that are used on every T90 that, we'll, that we might start finding a bit of flash or. Uh, because they've made several variants of the kit and they've, some of the sprues will have stayed the same in every single kit. And this will be one of them if there are any. As you can see, oh, don't pick the knife up. 
I've got the lower part of the fenders, which the storage boxes and ammo uh, fuel uh, affix to. Some more stowage. The little extensions for the lower hull, which those little dimples are where the little PE bits go. Another rear plate. Exhaust. Fender stays. And again, crisply moulded, no problems at all with that. Detail on the underside of the fenders, okay, we've got ejector pin marks, but you will never see them. Um, it is the thing with a lot of modern tanks, is they have huge side skirts, or bazooka plates as they used to get called. And you basically can't see anything of the... In of the fenders or the tracks or you know, it's all hidden up. Next sprue we have two identical sprues, sprue A, and these are definitely from the original T90 kits because I recognise them. We'll pop one in the box again. So what do we have here? We have smoke dischargers, more suspension arms, the fuel barrels for the rear with the mounts, the uh, whatever it is, I don't know whether it's a fuel rail or not, it runs along the back of the tank. And here is where we get into some of the fiddlier, del more delicate parts. If we can look along here, oh, we'll actually zoom you in quickly just so you can pick up on how small some of these bits are. As you can see, the detail on the uh, fuel barrel with the straps molded in. If I bring you down here, you can see just how small and delicate some of these parts actually are. Um, and yeah, it's what I like, what I enjoy putting together. So I'm really looking forward to this. I might actually start this later on. We shall see how I feel. But yeah. Another very nice sprue. I'll zoom me back out again. I actually got it the right way around. Oh, cutting mats on the huh. There we go. Level stuff up a bit. Oh, no, don't cut on the sticker. Now I'll cut the wrong side of the join. Yeah, but we'll man it. Brute force. Now on this tank, I don't believe it comes with an aluminium barrel, so we've got a two-part barrel. To me, that's not a problem. I can quite easily glue those two halves together and sand out any seams. That's not something that's going to take forever to do. And this is one of the new sprues as well for the new kit. Uh, more hatches, detail parts, fiddly parts. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure what the majority of them are but they all look nicely moulded. That's going to be the um, smoke discharger launch, uh, mounts. One there and one there. Some more of the re Contact 5 reactive armour. But yeah, all in all a very nice looking sprue like everyone else so far. You know, we got some decent mount, uh, mounting points on the barrel, so getting that together shouldn't be too much of an issue. We got some slightly iffy ejects pin marks, but again, a few quick swipes with the sander and they'll disappear. Not a problem. And we come to the wheelie bits. The roundy, spinny bit hearts. Which... 
Oh, come on, open up. Yeah. There we are. And again, we've got two identical sprues of wheels. One for the left, one for the right. Oh, I've actually... Wrap that all the way around both sprues to protect both of them, which is a nice touch. And we can see why. <laughs> it's very fiddly, delicate parts. Well, not necessarily fiddly, they're not small, they're just rather fine and filigreed. Let's zoom in a little more. So, as we can see, we've got the standard T90 road wheel set. The stamped, well, no, stamped, pressed, I can't remember which it is. But yeah, they go together well, nicely detailed. Sprockets, the idlers, the spare track link, and various other little greeblies, towing point, lights, suspension arms, idler arms. So these really fiddly, delicate parts. The return roller guides, and we flip it over, and also we've got a similar level of detail on the in interior parts of all the wheels and tyres and everything else. So they'll do a good job once they're on the tank, for all that they're going to be visible. I think it's about the lower half of the wheel that's visible. Um, whether you can even get them on once you put the fenders on, I don't know. We'll find out when we come to build it. Next sprue is part of the turret. And it's going to be the turret base. Oh, I think it's the turret base anyway. There's the main turret itself. I was wondering because I hadn't actually seen the turret. <laughs> I'm thinking, hang on, is it individual plates or? No, it isn't. All right, so, flip it this way up, which is the right way up. There we go. So, I have what I'm, I'm assuming is extra add on armour for the lower hull, as it has cut, cut outs in the sides for the, oh, excuse me, suspension arms. Turret base, I think that might be the base of part of the countermeasure suite. Some more add on armour, infrared searchlights, that kind of thing. And again, no issues, no flash, nothing, well, nothing noticeable anyway. Might be the odd wispy bit, but. Nothing to write home or worry about. And down to the last actual sprue of grey plastic, anyway. It's just the, just the main turret, the tracks, the edge. I did change the knife blade recently. I don't know what I've been cutting. Uh, so I'd say that might explain it going blunt. And here we have the side skirts for the T90S 2013 version. We've got another fender. I'm guessing the left side fender is different. And we have the Multi-part side skirts, different hatches, moulded as one, but easy enough if you wanted to model it with one missing to just chop one out, I guess, and stick the other, stick the rest back on. And then fine, delicate detail. Whether you can stick these on after you've painted it, I don't know. I'll work that out as I get there. As we can see, yes, we've got in no. Eject pin marks on the inside, but they're not going to be visible. So, another very nice sprue. And here's where we come to. Work. Oh, no, 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 we do have another grey sprue. I forgot about this one. 
This is the uh, delicate part sprue. <laughs> I really should. It's because I'm trying to cut off the mat, that's what the problem is. There we go. And when Trumpeter decides to cover an entire sprue with protective film, you know there's going to be some fiddly delicate bits on it. Why other manufacturers don't do that? I, yeah, I know why they don't. It adds money, but it does such a good job of protecting the parts. So we've got more of the bar armour and fuel pipes and various other fiddly parts. Quite where they're supposed to chop off, I'm not entirely sure whether it's directly along there or actually back here somewhere. I would assume probably right along the edge there. Could be interesting to remove. Um, again, yeah, so there's no ejector pin marks or anything on the bar armour, the slats. They don't look massively over scale or anything. And again, a very nicely moulded sprue. And here's where the majority of the parts actually come in. Um, what Trumpeter have done is they've taken what were fairly simple tracks to put together on the other T90s and they've complicated them. Which I'm not worried about, it doesn't bother me, although I do have a set of frills for a T90 sitting around. And put that bag out of the way. We've got four sprues of these, but we do only need the one, I guess. Oh, how are we doing on time? Not too bad. As we can see, we've got the individual links. We also have, there's not really much point in me getting them out, these sprues with the individual guide horns on. So the guide horns all need to be glued onto each of the track links. And that little bit there. And we also have the uh, track joiners, the track ends as it were, which do have two little holes moulded in, so once you've glued on all the uh, guide teeth, we then two track links together, join them together with these, and then keep going down the road. Whether they'll end up workable I don't know, I think I will probably just glue them. Um, if I don't use the metal tracks that I do have um, it's not that I'm, I ever short of tracks for a T90 or T80 or whichever variant of it's going to be um, but yeah I'll say they're nice crisply cleanly moulded well detailed they certainly don't let the kit down in any way so yeah, more than passable. Certainly a lot better than some tracks I've seen in kits. Oh, just move that out of the way. Yeah, back to the little hods and sods. We have the turret main part. With some copper wire to go inside the vinyl tubing so you can pose the fuel lines exactly where how you want them. The upper turret as one would expect not massively detailed and there are some nice weld seams on there and bolt detail and what details on there is very nice but it's a T90 so majority of this is going to get covered with about two or three layers of other parts. Um, <laughs> it's just the way they are. 
you normally find there are more parts in a T90 turret than in most other tanks total. But yeah, good solid moulding. Not warped. And doesn't have the date in it, but it is a 2017 kit. And the last part is the, well, I think, oh, no, no, we've still got something else left after this. It's the gun man, uh, gun, gun mantlets, I nearly swore there, which are moulded in a soft vinyl rubber. So you need to use super glue, cyanoacrylate to attach them. If I remember correctly, I think it's they're basically they're the same. They just give you a different degree of gun elevation that way. So I want to be straight ahead. Want to be pointing up slightly. But again, yeah, there's a little bit of flashing around these. But you're going to get that with vinyl. But yeah, provide a good solid mounting for the gun and not snap when you knock it. Then we come to the edge and although it might look quite a bit of etch compared to some T90s this one's not got a lot in it whatsoever. We have that one and that one. So we just have the two sheets, <laughs> just the two sheets which are mainly the grills, the little uh, IR detectors or bouncers, whichever they are, fender joins, um, fuel tank straps, and it's various grills, vents and other parts. I'd say not a huge amount of PE, uh, but certainly enough to tart it up and make it look shiny and nice. Give an extra level of detail and fidelity. Uh, it's a typical trumpet etch. It's, uh, it's actually a little thinner than it sometimes is, and does have the plastic on either side of it, so that when you cut it, it doesn't just go ping and disappear off into the distance somewhere. Now we come down to oh, what else we got left in the box. We have the Adverse for it. Consists of 1461 parts on 31 sprues, 202 parts of photo etch and copper wire vinyl tube and copper cable. So yeah, just, just a few parts. What other things are they advertising? The high speed trench digger. And couple of targets, a KV2 and a couple of floaty th or, and a floaty thing. I still want the condensate, a heavy artillery. That's what I want. We have the colour call out which as per usual with Trumpy is in full colour. No decal call outs because there aren't any on it. And the colours are in Mr. Hobby, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamir and Humbrol, so pretty much covering everyone. Oh, sand yellow, brown, red, red brown, tyre black, flat black, metal black. So yeah, pretty much colours we've all got. Especially if you've done anything in a desert camo. Interesting colour scheme with the tritone. Going to be fun to mask, I'll give it that. <laughs> Fortunately, it's fairly flat. It's not like some T90s are, so it shouldn't be too evil to try and mask out. But we shall see what what happens when we get to it. Might find some pictures of research of something in a different scheme that makes me go all shiny, i.e., Russian green. Right, I'll zoom you out a little bit for the instructions. And it is typical Trumpeter instruction manuals. We've seen them. If you've seen any other Trumpeter reviews, you know what you're going to get. Sprue maps. Straight into it. All clear, methodical, laid out well. Occasionally you might get a wrong part number. 
but as you see everything clear shows you where things go where to drill holes what fits where little sub assemblies of the arrows that show you, you know, start here do this 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 and in usual tank fashion you build up the lower hull and they tell you to put the wheels and the tracks on as we can see the tracks are the more complex type 84 links for each side but as I figured out with T90s you only need 48 because you just need to hook it around the top of the sprocket in the idler that top run is completely invisible and if you've glued the fenders on you'll never get them in anyway so <laughs> carrying on it looks like we might be able to glue the fenders on afterwards which would be nice otherwise they could be an absolute to get the tracks etc on going through adding the bar armor and the other fiddly parts oh, maybe not might have to put the fenders on first although getting the wheels in under those fenders could be interesting mm, I don't know we shall have to see how we go when we get there some interesting etch bending techniques so we to put a dent in it oh well and up to set 25 and we've done the lower hull and then we're on to the turret which is as I say it's pretty much the same all the way through the instructions there's nothing too complex it's just a high parts count there's not actually a lot to this turret compared to some um, and then the last one is put the turret on, sit back, admire it, and then go, how the hell am I going to paint that? Right. So, as I'm never going to get the box art in the picture, I'll leave the instructions there. So, that's a quick look through and review of the Trumpeter T90S Modernized 2013. Looks to be a very nice kit. I've built a few of the T90s now and I do really enjoy them. They are my kind of kit. So if you're thinking of getting one, don't be put off by the parts count because it all fits together and goes together well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have fun, enjoy your modelling. Peace, rock on, and buzzy bye.